Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now today's video we're going to be doing a quick tip tactica on Imperial Guard Super Heavies. Now I could go on and on and on about Imperial Guard Super Heavies because there's so many of them and there's so many, so much variety. Not only in the Codex, we've got four drilled ones. My God, there's so many Imperial Guard Super Heavies. But what we're going to talk about today, we're going to do a quick tip tactica on them and what they're general best uses almost independent of what kind of super heavy you pick so the great thing about the imperial guard super heavies is they come with a lot of gun i mean it doesn't really matter which one you pick it comes with a big big cannon the potential to have four sets of sponsors of which it, each sponsor has like two heavy bolters and a las cannon then you've got uh, the heavy bolters on the front as well so you could have 10 heavy bolters four last cannons and a big cannon and then you know some of them have got uh auto cannons in the turrets and then demolisher cannons in the hull so these things have a lot of gun and they are big and imposing on the battlefield now this gives them a remarkable battlefield presence and the great thing about all of these super heavies is uh their ability to just cause huge amounts of damage to the enemy now they good good alpha strike shall we say good they, they have they can sling a lot of rounds down range many of them put out you know 2d6 3d6 shots each uh so they really are a genuine threat they are very <laughs> very powerful but they do they're not invincible and when they when when sort of the imperial guard codex first dropped and it was beginning of eighth edition bane blades really were almost well not bane blades but I, if i say bane blade it's a catch-all term for any of the super heavies but you know for example bane blades were almost an auto include in many imperial guard lists they were just they were very good you could repair them uh, with jury rigging and with uh, a tech priest so you could heal an average of two whole points back they had they have a huge amount of wounds they've got a good toughness and they've got a decent save now unfortunately as sort of time has passed and the the inevitable march of progress slash codex creep has come along they have lost a lot of their shine but they are still very good the problem is that in pearl guard super heavies now uh they're, they're no longer the undisputed masters things like imperial knights have got better uh so now they are what i would consider just a solid choice they are very good, but they're not auto-include, they're not auto-win. But for sure, you will not suffer for including one in your list at all. Your list will only benefit from having one of these things in. Okay? Um, they are very, very good. Um, but they're just, they're just not auto-include now. They're a solid choice. Now, what sort of... Like I said, regardless of what weapons you you bring on them regardless of which one you pick whether it's a hellhammer or a shadow sword or a bane blade it doesn't matter there are some general tenants which they bring to the field number one is of course they bring a lot of firepower we've mentioned that they do essentially do the work of you know two to three lehman russes so uh but at the same you know but in a more concentrated package that has advantages and disadvantages advantages it's easier to repair them it's easier to to get force concentration if you put a bane blade on a flank that's an incredible amount of force concentrated in one place three lean russes might end up getting spread out they can't hug as much cut the uh, in, in terms of, sort of hugging cover um so they, they do bring great force concentration the disadvantage obviously is, is that it's all your eggs in one basket potentially um they are also surprisingly effective in close combat their grinding treads combined with the strike and crush them means that statistically a a super heavy an imperial super heavy in close combat is more effective than a bloodthirster in close combat bear that in mind you know, that's actually that's you know that's a really important thing to understand um and they can't be locked up in close combat either they can when they are in combat they can still shoot out of combat so they can be grinding away with their treads 
and still be blasting away with their guns. So they are not only their great firepower, they are also an incredible counter-attack and close combat unit. So that, so don't be afraid of getting these things into close combat. Don't be afraid of charging up behind. A Bane Blade can lead a charge. A Lehman Russ can't lead a charge because if it gets tied up in close combat, you lose your, that firepower. Bane Blade doesn't care. You know, Bane Blade lives the thug life. It just smashes into the enemy. And if it's in combat, it's grinding away. You are a happy clam. Okay, so don't worry about that. Bane Blade can lead a charge and in many cases should lead a charge because it brings me on to my third point. Okay, my third point which is the psychological factor of bringing a super heavy to the battlefield. Now when someone, we all know this when we faced Imperial Knights, when someone brings a super heavy to the field it changes the dynamic of the game and this is still true of the bane blade but the bane blade slash super heavy imperial guard super heavy has an advantage over it has as over the imperial knight which is its lower profile now it is not exactly hugging the ground guys but it is significantly lower to the ground than an imperial knight which now I'm sort of this is actually the, actually the reason this is important is actually I didn't really even, this is like the third point, this is the, fourth, the fourth point is psychological impact. The third point is, it, it, it's low to the ground, so it's, it's easier to, to put it in cover, it's easier to actually hide it. Uh, it is possible to sneak a Bane Blade Creed style. It is possible to do that. Uh, which means it's good at hugging cover, so it has that advantage over other super heavies. Now, that was point three. Point four is the psychological impact. Like I said, when you bring a super heavy to the, to the battlefield, it changes the dynamic of the game. Often the side which doesn't have a super heavy can be at a disadvantage. We've all know how difficult it is to deal with Imperial Knights. The same is true with Bane Blades. Okay, with, with Imperial Guard Super Heavies. They do change the dynamic of the game. And it has a great psychological impact on your opponent. Many, many times that you bring a super heavy like a Bane Blade, to the field of battle, it will become a fire magnet. It will, as we have discussed on this channel before, but I think I need to do a video rediscussing it, it will put the voodoo, it will put the fear, the voodoo, into your opponent. And you will dictate his actions by bringing a super heavy. He will fire a lot at this thing. And it's not easy to kill. Unless you oppose, for example, like a, a volcano cannon or a volcano lance on uh, on like a knight. Unless they do that, it's surprisingly difficult to get rid of one of the things. It's not, it's not really easy to kill one of these things in a turn. You know, maybe two turns is more feasible. But, you know, played properly with Night Shroud, Psychic Barrier, In Cover... These things can, they, you know, they can be genuinely tough to deal with. Um, now, because of that, you, they will, they, the biggest thing, not only can you dictate how your opponent's going to do, you, they can be a huge distraction kind of effects. And this links into the second point I made about leading the charge of one of these things. If you smash, if you lead the charge of the Bane Blade, you've got one of these charging up, up a flank, supported by a huge wave of infantry, 60, 70 infantry, or maybe some hellhounds, it's going to have an effect on the opponent. They're going, they're going to have to respond or they're going to lose that flank. It, and I've talked about this in other videos, it allows you to control the flow of the game to have the momentum. Now, when you lose that Bane Blade, it's very important, speaking of voodoo, it's very important that you don't boomerang the voodoo back into yourself and get disheartened when you lose it. Okay, in 99% of the time, statistic pulled up my ass. The vast majority of the time that you bring one of these things, you're going to lose it. It's going to die because it's going to draw a lot of fire. But it will allow you to dictate the flow of the game and you can smash your opponent with your other assets whilst he's busy dealing with your Bane Blade. Bring two Bane Blades. Bring three Bane Blades. And you know what, guys? You can probably still squeeze in 100 infantry. So bear that in mind. So the reason why Super Heavies are good is they've got incredible firepower, great close combat counterattack charging capabilities. 
they are they have some advantages in terms of uh, being able to hide them over other the most common uh, super heavies like Imperial Knights, and they have a great psychological impact. Bane blades are the ultimate distraction can effects. If you don't know what that is, go and Google it. Thank you for listening, and I will see you guys next time.